Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. People frequently ask me about the official justifications for the adjustments being made to the U.S. temperature data set. These adjustments turn a century-long strong cooling trend into a warming trend. In this video, I'm going to show you the actual thermometer data and the adjusted data. I'm also going to show you what they claim they're doing with the adjustments and what they're actually doing. This is the official U.S. maximum temperature graph from NOAA for the past century. It shows a strong warming trend. When people see this graph, they generally assume that it represents the actual thermometer data. But it doesn't. This is what the thermometer data looks like. The century-long trend is downward, and the U.S. was much hotter prior to 1960. But NOAA alters the data to turn it into a warming trend, and they release it to the public without any sort of disclaimer or warning. The NOAA graphs provide no indication that the data has been altered. Now let's take a closer look. This graph shows the five-year mean of both the measured and the adjusted data sets. The blue line is the actual thermometer data, and the red line is nearly identical to the graph they released to the public. So now let's take a look at which graph is more credible. The measured temperatures which show cooling, or the adjusted temperatures which show warming. There is very little dispute among people familiar with the data that prior to 60 years ago, summers were much hotter in the United States. This graph shows the percent of days above 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius at all United States Historical Climatology Network stations which took readings during July 1936, which was the hottest month on record in the United States. The graph begins in 1919 and ends in 2019. And as I mentioned, all of the stations used in this graph have been around for a long time. They were all active in 1936. It's pretty clear that summers in the United States were much hotter prior to the year 1960. And these graphs from the U.S. National Climate Assessment show the same thing. The length of warm spells used to be longer. The magnitude of heat waves used to be much higher. And the warmest temperature of the year used to be much higher across most of the country. So what justification does NOAA have for turning this cooling trend into a warming trend? We are going to take a look at that now. The main justification they use is called time of observation bias. Using this graph, I'm going to explain how that works. The red line in this graph shows temperatures at Fort Collins, Colorado from July 2nd through July 7th, 2019. The blue line shows the dew point, but that's not important for what we're discussing, so you can ignore it. On July 3, 2019, the coolest temperature was 60 degrees Fahrenheit and the warmest was 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And on July 4, the coolest temperature was also 60 degrees, but the warmest temperature was only 80 degrees. I was in Fort Collins on July 4 last year, and it was quite cool. Now I'm going to show you what time of observation bias is about. Suppose that the 24-hour period we used to represent a day didn't start at midnight. Suppose it started at some other time. This graph shows what would happen if we started our day at 4 o'clock in the afternoon instead of at midnight. If we did that, the maximum temperature for both July 3rd and July 4th would be 90 degrees. This is incorrect, though, because the actual maximum temperature on July 4th was only 80 degrees, not 90 degrees. But by starting the day at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we turned July 4th 10 degrees warmer than it actually was. Note that right here there's 90 degree temperatures both on the first 24 hour interval and on the second 24 hour interval. By starting our 24 hour period too close to the afternoon maximum, we tend to double count hot days. And if we started our 24 hour period too close to the morning minimum, we would have the opposite problem. If we did that, we would double count cold nights. NOAA believes that most of the U.S. stations during the hot 1930s started their 24-hour period during the afternoon. Thus, they believe that the average maximum temperatures during the 1930s were recorded being higher than they actually were. This theory is actually very easy to test out. All we have to do is split up the stations into two groups. One group contains the stations which started their 24-hour period during the 1930s in the afternoon. And the other group contains the stations which started their 24-hour period either in the morning or at night. If the NOAA theory is correct, then the afternoon stations from the 1930s should show a strong cooling trend over time. And the stations which started their 24-hour period during the morning should show a warming trend. So I did that experiment, and as predicted, the afternoon stations showed a cooling trend. But unfortunately for NOAA, the morning stations also show the same cooling trend. This experiment destroys their theory, and it also destroys the basis for their data tampering. 
This graph shows both groups of thermometers at the same scale. The average temperature of the morning stations is several degrees higher than the afternoon stations. This may seem counterintuitive, but it's not. People who live in warmer climates and lower latitudes are more likely to go out and check their thermometers in the morning. Whereas people who live at colder locations at higher latitudes are more likely to check their thermometers in the afternoon. Thus the afternoon stations are cooler than the morning stations. In this graph I've normalized the y-axis so that you can compare the trends more easily between the two groups. As you can see there's almost no difference in the trend between the two groups. In theory the time of observation bias adjustment appears to be sound, but in practice it shows very little or no validity. Now we're going to look at this in more detail at the Super Bowl state of Missouri. During July 1936, Missouri had nearly an equal number of morning and afternoon stations. This map shows the Missouri July 1936 afternoon stations, and this map shows the July 1936 morning stations. This graph shows a century worth of July afternoon maximum temperatures in Missouri for both groups of stations. As you can see, the morning stations and the afternoon stations are nearly identical and the trends are parallel to each other. And this graph shows the July percent of days above 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, both groups are nearly identical and the trends are parallel. Despite a nearly even split between afternoon stations and morning stations, there's no indication that time of observation has any impact on July temperatures in Missouri. But now let's look at how NOAA tampers with Missouri temperature data. This animation flashes back and forth between the measured data and the NOAA adjusted data. You can see that NOAA makes the very strong cooling trend disappear in their adjustments. NOAA is massively hacking Missouri temperatures without any sound basis for what they're doing. Missouri used to be much hotter than it is now. This graph shows the percent of days above 95 degrees Fahrenheit at all Missouri United States Historical Climatology Network stations. In 1936, nearly 20% of days in Missouri were above 95 degrees Fahrenheit, but now they're down pretty close to zero. Temperatures in Missouri have plummeted over the past century. And by tampering with the data, NOAA has made this information disappear. They're rewriting Missouri's history. Now I'm going to show you what's actually going on with NOAA data tampering. In their adjusted data set, every month NOAA calculates a certain percentage of the stations as estimated. That means that the temperatures came from a computer model rather than from a thermometer. This is easy to identify in their data set because they mark the estimated temperatures with a capital E. Prior to about 1990, they typically estimated 10% of their data, but now they estimate almost half of it. NOAA has created a massive hockey stick of fabricated data. When you make up 50% of the data, you can get any result you want. I pointed this out to Anthony Watts six years ago. At first he didn't want to believe it, but eventually he realized that it was true. So Anthony contacted the people in charge at the National Climatic Data Center. And Anthony also contacted Zeke Howe's father at Berkeley Earth. They all acted like they were shocked to learn that they were making up data. And Anthony thought that once he brought it to their attention, they would have it fixed possibly within a week. And here we are six years later, and they've only made their hockey stick much worse. They never had any intention of fixing the problem. Noah even released a statement to Judith Curry saying that the adjustments were done by design. They pretended to be shocked to be informed of what they were doing, but they knew exactly what they were doing all along. And here comes the punchline. This graph shows the adjustments being made to U.S. temperatures. Past temperatures are cooled way down from what the thermometer recorded, and recent temperatures are warmed way up above what the thermometer recorded. In doing this, Noah creates a warming trend which does not exist in reality. This graph is the same graph, but instead of plotting time along the x-axis, I plot atmospheric carbon dioxide. And here's where you can see what's really going on. NOAA is tampering with the temperature data to precisely match their carbon dioxide theory. As carbon dioxide increases, they linearly increase their data tampering to coincide with CO2. This is the exact opposite of how science is supposed to be done, and it's the ultimate junk science. Sometimes when I point this out, climate alarmists respond by saying, well, the U.S. is only 2% of the Earth's surface. That's a terrible argument for a couple of reasons. This map shows the location of all NOAA stations where they have daily temperature data from 1891 to 1920. As you can see, the vast majority of their high-quality stations are located in the United States. Outside of the United States, Western Europe, and parts of Australia, there's very little high-quality long-term temperature data around the Earth. Most of the good stations on the planet are in the United States, and the United States is cooling. 
but NOAA is tampering with the U.S. temperature data to make it look like the U.S. is warming. There's very little or no high quality long term temperature data from South America, Africa, or most of Asia. But one of the few places where they do have high quality long term temperature data, they tamper with the data to turn cooling into warming. Between the data tampering in the U.S. and the very sparse coverage outside of the U.S., there's little reason to believe that the long term global temperature record has any meaning. And if NOAA is willing to do this sort of data tampering with their best temperature data set in the United States, just imagine what they're doing with the really lousy data they've got from places like South America and Africa. The global temperature record is a complete farce. It's being mismanaged by a small group of people who appear determined to influence policy. And then policymakers in the Democratic Party want me silenced for bringing this information to the public attention. I point out dangerous climate misinformation coming from the government. But some congressional Democrats don't want me doing that, so they accuse me of doing exactly what it is that they're doing. Rewriting the past is straight out of Orwell's 1984. You can help me convey this information by passing this video around to as many people as possible, and also by subscribing to my YouTube channel. And visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.